This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. With it, I've created my very own website, which we'll be releasing to you guys soon, and Squarespace made it a very easy process. But more on that later. Welcome everyone, my name's Sylph, and this is my attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Diamond with only Poison-type Pokemon. The full rule set for this run is listed down below, but put simply, only the first Poison-type encounter in each route or area can be caught. If a Pokemon faints, it must be permanently boxed. No items except health items in battle. Party Pokemon levels are limited to the next gym leader or the final league member's ace. And finally, the battle mode must be put on set at all times. Ah, uh, the poison type. One of those types that I think gets a bad rep due to the overpowered nature of the psychic type in early generations. Ever since Gen 1, poison has kind of been getting better and better with new Pokemon and the introduction of the fairy type. But I want to see just how good the type was halfway through this process in Generation 4 with Pokemon Diamond. This challenge is going to give us a lot of cool encounter possibilities with quite a few Pokemon that we've never used before in our Nuzlocks. But will they be able to prevail? Only time will tell. Pokemon Diamond, the second game I ever broke the game clock on, over 1,000 hours. What is wrong with me? Let me know in the comments if you've done that for any game, because I'd be curious to know. But in all my 1,000 hours playing this, I never realized that if you give Barry a nickname but then decline it, the game offers to name him Pearl, even though that's not one of the default names it initially offers. Interesting. Speaking of Barry, our mom says he wants to see us and that it's an emergency, and honestly, what isn't an emergency with that guy? I mean, really? Of course, we did end up in an emergency situation with him at the lake, and we have to steal a starter Pokemon, so I picked Chimchar, as I figure Barry getting an eventual steel type will be the toughest challenge for us. While nicknaming Chimchar, I almost named him Rue Jr. instead of Roy Jr. And then only as I clicked OK, I realized it was female, a 12.5% chance. Oops. Oh well. Up ahead, after teaching us how to catch a Pokemon, Dawn gives us some Pokeballs, meaning our challenge has officially begun. Crushing some trainers' hopes and dreams along the way, we arrive in Jubilife City, and this time we're actually going to run right through it up north to Route 204, as this is where we can get our first viable encounter. It ends up being none other than a Badoo, an incredibly weak Pokemon to start with, but hey, we can't be picky here. We catch it successfully and nickname him Brett, and Brett has a quirky neutral nature. Works for me. With that, we're forced to box Roy Jr. So many fond memories during those 50 steps we took with her. You'll be missed. Now, for what feels like the first time in forever, we can actually grab a second viable encounter before the first gym by heading north of Route 204 to the Ravaged Path. There's only a small portion of it that's open to us, but it suffices as here we can find a Zubat. Now, if I recall correctly, the only other time we've used the Zubat line was in Fire Red and Leaf Green, in which you can't evolve Golbat until the post game, so I'm very excited to see what a Crobat can do. We catch it and nickname him Ricky, and Ricky has a rash plus special attack and minus special defense nature, which isn't great. While exploring Jubilife City, we can pick up some useful items like the Hidden Power TM from the Trainer School Kids, the Quick Claw, and of course the Poke Edge from the Clowns. Now that's not an insult, they're actually clowns. With nothing left to do here, we head to Route 203, where good old Barry challenges us to battle. Now, a Starly lead is actually a bit complicated for us, but thankfully it doesn't have any flying moves yet and has Growl, so I lead with Badoo. Essentially, what I did here was load up on two growths to charge our special attack up. That way, when we use Resisted Absorb, it at least does a little damage and gives us some recovery too. It did even less than I thought though, but I knew I couldn't switch into Zubat to take on both Starly and Piplop. It looks like he's doing about 6 HP damage though, and our last absorb brought us to 7 HP, so I risk it, and he hits us down to just 1 HP, but our Poison Point ability activates, we barely don't take him out with Absorb, but then the Poison takes him down. Holy, that was unreal. From there, according to my calcs, we should be able to outspeed the Piplup, so I risk it. We do bring him to half, but get enough recovery to survive a pound and take him down with one more attack. Man, oh man, what a wild first battle that was. Our next destination is Orberg City, where somehow it looks like Barry is already causing trouble. After rescuing Roar, from the collapsing mines, it's time for the first gym. Now, being a rock-type gym, I'm very much worried about Ricky here, but I think Brett should take us through nicely, as he's able to one-hit KO all the gym trainer's Geodudes with four times super effective, same-type attack bonus or stab Mega Drain he recently learned. Nice. It's time for the first gym leader, Rourke. His team can get scary, especially with Kranidos' ridiculous 125 base attack stat, but I think I have a plan. He leads with a Geodude, and I go for Absorb right off the bat to take him out. He next sends out Onyx, and I waited until now to use Growth to charge up 
up our special attack, as it has a way lower attack than Geodude, so it's safer to do so now. After two of them, we only got hit to 29 HP, and his Screech missed thankfully, so one attack demolishes him. His final Pokemon is Kranidos, and thankfully we didn't get that defense drop, but it turns out we outspeed him anyway, so Brett eviscerates him with a plus two Mega Drain. What a beast. First badge acquired. Back in Jubilee, Professor Rowan requests that we show these Galactic Grunts some manners, and... Dude, I'm no shining beacon of honor here, I literally stole your Pokémon from you. Up ahead, we arrive in Floroma Town, where we can not only admire its beauty, but also finally get some much-needed berries, too. Hey, look, look at those flowers. Pokémon Scarlet and Violet confirmed. In one of the houses, this girl gives us the Pluck TM, which is gonna be amazing for Ricky now that I think about it. The Valley Windworks is upon us, and if I'm honest, I'm a bit scared of this place. Commander Mars' team is beastly for this early in game, and I'm starting to realize we have no hope, unless... Since we have two Pokémon and another encounter before the next gym, I say screw it and bring Zubat right up to the level cap of 22, where he thankfully evolves into a Golbat. I also teach him Pluck and go for it. She leads with a Zubat, and our superior Bat does the job, taking him out in just one attack. In comes the big threat, Perugly, and the more I thought about it, the more I realized Golbat is the perfect counter for this thing. Not only having the inner focus ability so her fake out can't flinch us, but also being able to use Pluck to steal and use her Citrus Berry so two hits instantly take it down with us at full health in the end. Ricky, you monster. Mars deserves that after all she's put us through in past runs, though. Uh, no, 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 no. Little girl, do not play with the balloon Pokemon. I am begging you. Eternal Forest is upon us, and here we can grab a third Poison-type encounter, Wormpole. It's always a struggle catching Pokemon here, since Cheryl might very well kill the one you're trying to catch, but we accomplished it and name our Wurmple Deveal. Deveal has a hasty nature, plus speed, and minus defense, which is meh. Now the problem is that we don't know what evolution line this Wurmple is a part of, since only one retains the poison typing, but after a single level, it thankfully evolves into a Cascoon. A singular extra level then allows us to evolve him again into a beautiful Dustox. Not an amazing Pokemon stat-wise, but it does have some great utility moves up sleeve. Our journey brings us to Eterna City where the next gym is, but first we can pick up the Taunt TM on the next route, which might be useful at some point. The Eterna Gym is next, a Grass-type gym, and I'd say our team is pretty damn well equipped to handle this one, wouldn't you? I mean, we literally have three Pokémon that all four times resist Grass. Our newly evolved Deveal tears through the entire gym with Gust, handling even the fellow Poison types. Hey, hey Deveal, why are you so tilted, bro? <laughs> The second gym leader is Gardenia, one who has caused us trouble in the past, but I don't anticipate the same happening right now. She leads with a Cherubi, and I send out Deveal. Gus does less than half before she used Growth, and here I saw a good opportunity. We can hit her again to force her into using her Super Potion now by bringing her into the red, and the plan works well as a few more attacks take her down after she heals. In comes her Turtwig next, and I was worried about this thing using Reflect, but she just ended up using Grass Knot, Razor Leaf, and Withdraw the whole time, so although her defense raised, we still took her out taking minimal damage in the process. Her final Pokemon is a Roserade, and here I decide to switch into Ricky for some more power and knowing we could steal her citrus berry with pluck to heal whatever switch damage she manages and between confuse ray and pluck there was no hope for her at all she even came in at one point and said are you saying something you think you have me cornered uh yes as we claim the win for our second badge with the Cut HM in hand, we can now grab the Thief TM so we can get some type boosting items off of wild Pokemon, and this little secret area here back on the last route also grants us a great item, the Silver Powder to boost bug move power. The Galactic Building in Eterna brings us to Commander Jupiter, and she leads with a Zubat, which actually survived a pluck surprisingly, but only managed to bite before we took it out. Now her Skun Tank is a huge threat with Night Slash of all things, so I decided to use Confuse Ray right off the bat. She broke through and used Smoke Screen, which isn't great, and then we missed a pluck, got hit by Night Slash, but thankfully no crit so we could hit it with Pluck and steal its Citrus Berry. It then used Screech of all things, and with lower defense plus lowered accuracy, I was nervous, but after another hit, she just used it again and we could take it down with one more attack. Could have been scary, but Ricky managed quite well there. After getting the experience share, we could hit up the cycling road, Route 206, where we can grab a new encounter, this time a Stunky. We catch it successfully and nickname it Richie, and Richie has a careful, plus special defense, and minus special attack nature, which is not bad. This route also grants us the poison barb item, fantastic for our team. Now here, I headed back to Orberg City out of stubbornness, because damn it, I want to catch our next encounter in a Dusk Ball, which we can only get one of from this girl until this point. 
A long journey back brings us to Eterna Forest again where we can now access the old chateau which technically counts as a distinct area. Here we can find a ghastly and awesome addition to our team. The Dusk Ball plan did work as we catch it and nickname him Bobby who ended up having a docile neutral nature. I'll take it. In Mount Coronet we encounter Cyrus who just started like twerking on me out of nowhere. No idea what that's all about but won't be returning here in the near future that's for sure. Our traumatized self then arrives in Hardhome City where we can't do much since in this game, unlike Platinum, the gym is locked at the moment. We can at least pick up the Shell Bell though. Oh, damn it, I always, always forget about this berry battle. Luckily I had healed recently and luckily Ricky is also a damn beast as he's able to tear through his entire team alone because he has some pretty good type coverage against all of his team members at this point. The Lost Tower is our next destination giving us both the return TM as well as the strength HM from the old ladies at the top, who I always go to in Platinum 2 accidentally when they don't really give you anything useful. In the Salacion Ruins I... Oh, game, would you stop giving me the D? I'm trying to pick up all these items here. Route 209 gives us the Roost TM, which should be amazing for Ricky, and we can grab the Fist Plate too, which might be useful depending on what happens in a little bit. The Payback TM can also be amazing too, as it doubles to 100 power if used last in the turn. The end of the route brings us to a couple trainers who can be a run-ender if you're not careful. Luckily, we had Stunky to deal with Kadabra, which could have ended us, to be honest, and on the next trainer, Ricky handled them on Furno, and I took them on individually for a reason. A double battle with them becomes brutal, and the second one brings out a damn Gyarados of all things. You can find the Shockwave TM on this route, which usually helps, but none of our Pokemon can learn it, so I came up with an alternative plan. Since we got intimidated, I go for Confuse Ray, and then switch into Richie. But he snapped out of Confusion, but thankfully just used Bite. Here I get a Toxic off after being brought to about half, and then I switch into Deville, who has both Protect and Moonlight. So I could basically Toxic stall it while gaining back HP when needed. Whew, thank goodness for Deville and Richie. That win gives us access to Veilstone City, the location of the third gym, and many other great things such as the massage girl in this house. I decided to give a massage to Ricky to increase his friendship as we've had Brett for longer. Now we've got to be careful here as the level cap for both this gym and the next are both 30 so we have to go in a little bit under leveled. Regardless, a little bit of grinding has Brett evolve into a Rosalia. I thought we might have to wait since I forgot that 6.30pm still counts as daytime in these games. I live in Canada so right about now we don't see the sun past 3 p.m. Amazingly, it seems Ricky also likes us enough as he evolves into a majestic crowbat who I am incredibly excited to use. The evolutions aren't quite done with yet though as Ghastly evolves into a haunter. With a hyper-powered team, it's time for the Veilstone Gym, a fighting-type gym. For the trainers, I essentially attached the Mind Plate to Deville and had him go wild with Psybeam and Gust, which works well for both Metatites and Machokes. Not to mention we four times resist fighting. We get to the gym leader in no time, Maylene. I'm feeling pretty good about this battle, and it turns out that feeling was not unfounded as I lead with Ricky against her Metatite, who instantly KO'd it with Pluck. Machoke then comes out and survives a pluck, and here I was worried about Rock Tomb, but it just ended up using Foresight for some reason. Weird. Rock Tomb would have lowered our speed and likely caused us to switch, but Deville would have been a good pivot regardless. After Machoke goes down, she brings in her final Pokemon, Lucario, and Pluck does about a third and steals her Citrus Berry. Another hit brings it low, but not quite in Super Potion range it seems, as a third does the job. The only halfway decent threat there was Metal Claw, but she didn't use it, so that was a pretty clean battle. Route 214 grants us an amazing item, the Big Root, which increases HP gain from draining moves, which is great for Brett's Mega Drain and perhaps some other moves down the line. Astoria City is upon us, and there will be a couple cool things that we can get here later on, but for now, all we've got ahead of us is the gym itself. As a Water-type gym, we also have a decent type matchup here, as Brett with the Big Root is able to obliterate the trainers, even those who have Wingle, surprisingly enough. The fourth gym leader is Wake, and I really, really wanted to evolve Brett by this point, but unfortunately, the only way we can get a shiny stone is using the pickup ability on a Pokemon that has higher level than 41, which is not possible as per our rules, but oh well. Wake leads with a Gyarados, a big threat for us as always, and I lead with Bread. I go for Stun Spore right away to paralyze it and make sure we can outspeed, and then he hits us with Brine for not much damage. Here I go for Growth to charge our special attack, and he hits us with Dragon Rage through Paralysis. Ouch. I'm forced to use Mega Drain here, which thanks to the big root gets us decent recovery, just over the 40 HP mark that we need to survive the next Dragon Rage. But he stays paralyzed this turn anyway. He hits us with Swagger next though, which isn't good, and he super potions even from that range. 
Oof. We then hit ourselves in confusion on top of that, but with all that's going for us, I decide to risk it, and we snap out of confusion, after which he stays paralyzed. It's a crazy back and forth, but a few more do the job with us back at high health. Now, my calcs told me a Flossil's Ice Fang could do max 90% on us, so I'm hoping we're in the right range, and we survive it on just 5 HP, and he gets poisoned too. I hit him with Mega Drain, but he survives in the red, but he also has a Citrus Berry so Poison can't finish him off. The range would be crazy close at this point, and the range is also close to trigger a Super Potion, but it's too much to risk, so I switch into Deville as he does indeed Potion. A back and forth between the two brings Deville to about half before we can finish him off with one last Psybeam. His final Pokemon is Quagsire, so I switch back into Bread, who gets hit by Mud Bombs at below half and has his accuracy lowered, but we land a Mega Drain regardless for the 4 times super effective KO and our fourth badge. While chasing a Galactic Grunt out of the city, we encounter Barry, who... Ch Wait a minute, did he just say something about plowing me? Honestly, Ricky is just OP against Barry's team at this point. It's hilarious how much he failed to prepare for a Crobat. A bit of grinding later, and good old Richie evolves into a Skun Tank and learned Night Slash 2, while Hunter finally got Shadow Ball. Some great upgrades. At this point, I had returned to Amity Square to try and get the Spooky Plate item from it, but this lady says that none of our Pokémon are cute enough to enter. Are you kidding me? Look at our little cuties. Oh, now we get the Shadow Ball TM. Great timing. Just great. In Celestic Town, we reunite with our future wife, who ends up calling a Galactic Grunt an odd spaceman. See what I mean? A woman of my dreams. Anyway, she gives us the Surf HM, but... Oh, don't say it, Soph. Just don't say it, because she's so wet. One of the buildings also gives us the Black Glasses to boost Dark-type moves, great for Richie. Our return to Heart Home gives us access to the gym finally, and Richie with the Black Glasses got us to Fantina's room quite quickly. As a Ghost-type gym leader, I'm feeling pretty confident about our odds here. She leads with a Drift Blim, and Night Slash surprisingly KOs in one hit despite not even getting a crit. Unreal. Miss Magius comes out next and goes for Confuse Ray, and we do end up hurting ourselves in confusion. However, we resist all of her moves, so the most that she can do is bring us below half before we snap out of confusion and KO her. Her final Pokemon is Gengar, and we resist all of its moves too, so she went for Spite before Night Slash tears it to bits as well. Gotta say, Skuntank is the perfect counter for this gym. Amazing. Now that we can use Surf, I head back to Route 209 to pick up the Giga Drain TM in quite a secret location. I honestly don't recall coming here before, or at least not for a long time. We have unfinished business back in Pastoria though, the Great Marsh. The problem here is that both of our possible encounters only show up on certain days, and using the binoculars, it seems that the only one we can get today is Skorupi. It actually ends up being the first encounter we find in its area, and we also caught it in our first Safari Ball too. Not bad at all. I name her Groupie, and back at the PC, I check her nature, and damn, adamant. The best possible nature. Let's go, we might have a beast on our hands. Now this isn't the only treasure Pastoria has for us. Now that we have Surf, we can find our final encounter in the water, a tentacle. I catch one and nickname it Matt, and there's yet another prize for our efforts, as the shore here holds the Mystic Water item, a perfect complimentary item for Matt. Now, let's go check his nature at the PC. Speaking of the PC, our character here would be ill-advised to not get creating his own website to promote his wild nuzlocking skills, and thankfully for that, he has today's sponsor, Squarespace. I'll be honest, I've been putting off creating my own website for a while now, as it can be quite an intimidating process. But with no prior knowledge, I set myself a challenge. Challenge. What could I do with Squarespace with just one hour? And voila, I got an amazing start on my website with a custom template that they offered based on my preferences. I was able to represent my brand as best as possible and even made use of some really cool features that they've got, such as being able to embed my YouTube videos right on the site, which you can also do for your social media pages. You're also able to create member areas for gated content such as exclusive videos in my case, but newsletters, online courses, you can put just about anything in there at a fully customizable price for access. One of my favorite features is appointment scheduling where you can can have visitors book classes or sessions which get seamlessly added to your calendar and this thing is incredibly clear-cut and organized. Such a great way to streamline what would otherwise be a really complicated thing to manage. What I love most about Squarespace is the ease and customizability with which you can create and edit a site. Being able to toggle immediately between the site editor and the site preview to see how changes take effect live in the eyes of your visitors. Whether you've got a business of your own, are thinking of starting one, or have hobbies that you'd love to create a website about, there's no better way to make 
make it happen. Head to squarespace.com self to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code SILF. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video, and let's get back into the run. In the end, Matt ends up having a careful nature, plus special defense and minus special attack, which is pretty bad for our purposes, but he gives us amazing coverage which we're gonna need shortly, so I decide to replace DeVio for now. Regardless, a quick grind brings him to level 30 where he evolves into a Tentacruel, a Pokemon that I think is underrated in a lot of ways if I'm honest. Surf allows us to get another awesome item back on Route 212, the Rose Incense to boost Brett's grass moves. With that, we arrive in Canalave City, the location of the next gym, but first we have another rival battle with Barry, and this time he's grown quite a bit stronger. He leads with a Staravia with Intimidate, so sending Ricky out first isn't fantastic, so I switch into Matt. He merely went for Double Team twice, followed by Quick Attack, so two Surf did the job. Ponyta is then of course an instant one hit KO and in comes Heracross next. Because he doesn't have Stone Edge yet, I switch back into Ricky and he just went for Night Slash so a 4 times super effective pluck destroys him. From there, Ricky dukes it out with Primplup for a little bit, only being brought to just above half before KOing it. His final Pokemon is Rosalia, who is an instant pickoff with Pluck for the win. Now, Surf's magic isn't quite over yet, as in the harbor we can pick up the hidden U-turn TM, which should be a fantastic pivoting move for Ricky. Our next stop is the Canalave Gym, a Steel-type gym, and I'm very thankful we got Matt when we did, as he's able to obliterate all the trainers and avoid any overleveling on our other Pokemon. The Canalave Gym Leader is Byron, and I'm feeling pretty good about Matt's odds here. He leads with a Bronzor though, which I realized is a bit tricky type-wise for us, pretty much worst case scenario, but luckily Richie does have Flamethrower and Night Slash, which are able to do about the same amount of damage in the end, taking him down in two hits. In comes Steelix next, and because it doesn't have any ground moves, I can safely switch Matt in to tank the Gyro Ball and respond with a Surf one-hit KO. His final Pokemon is a Bastiodon, and this thing actually surprised me as it survived Surf with over a third, but just used Iron Defense, so another KOs for the win. After experiencing the Bomb Explosion, explosion in the library, totally a kid's game, we can set off to Iron Island for one reason in particular. Iron Island is a very long trek on the inside where we have to work with Riley, but after leaving him, only at the very end of the entire cave system can we grab the last item, the one we came here for, a shiny stone. With this, we can finally, finally evolve our first encounter, Brett, into a beautiful Roserade, which is quite a cool Pokemon and one that I don't think I've used in game before. Our battle with Saturn in Lake Valor was very interesting as Kadabra could have been a threat, but we have Ricky who could outspeed with Bite to instantly KO it, and then he sends out Bronze which also would have been a threat were it not for Richie who took it out in two hits. His final team member was a Pokemon that I kind of was hoping to get in this run as fighting would have given us amazing coverage against Steel types which otherwise wall us quite hard. But I guess it wasn't meant to be. Let's kill it for good measure. If I don't get one, no one does. Back at Lake Verity we have a battle with Commander Mars and we assert our Crobat superiority over Golbat with a fly which I finally ended up teaching to him by the way, followed by a couple plucks as I slightly miscalculated. Luckily she missed her two 55% accuracy supersonics. From there, I decided to just chip down her Bronzor with Bite, taking over half damage in the process from Extra Sensory before our berry. In comes her final Pokemon, Purugly. Now normally this thing outspeeds and slash crits everything in its path, but we have one of the ultimate fast Pokemon that's even faster than it, and this is why I was okay with taking damage earlier, as we can use Pluck to steal its Citrus Berry, and then slam it with a Fly for the KO, since she didn't end up using Slash anyway. Our journey next brings us to the beautiful yet hellish snow biome of Route 216 where we can find a whole host of great items, such as the Icicle Plate, the Rock Climb TM which will allow us to get the Ice Beam TM eventually, and also the Spell Tag from this creepy girl to boost ghost moves. Our long trek through Canada brings us to Snow Point City, and god damn am I ever sick of winter at this point, I don't need to see it in game too. Oh hey look, it's one of those Psyducks we drugged to get to Celestic Town. Yep, definitely one of them. This snow point gym is upon us, and Bobby did a fantastic job against all of the trainers with neutral shadow ball coverage, which could just power through them all. During the 17 hours of completing the maze, Groupie ends up finally evolving into a beastly Drapion, adding some extra power and bulk to our team for sure. The seventh gym leader is Candice, the ice type gym leader, and I theory crafted for this battle for a little while and finally came up with what I was thinking would be a perfect plan. Let's see how this goes. 
She leads with a Snover, and I send out Ricky. It looks risky on the surface due to her ice types, but thankfully Ricky has enough power at this point to one-hit KO it with a super effective Stab Fly. Next, she sends out Sneasel. Again, looks incredibly risky, but that was part of my plan. I put the Iron Plate on Ricky and taught him the Steel Wing TM, and of course he's one of the few Pokemon that can outspeed something like a Sneasel, and Steel Wing connects for the one-hit KO, although the range was close. In comes Metacham next, and this is another easy one-hit KO for Ricky with Fly, even though it had Ice Punch. Whoever thought a flying type would do so well against an ice trainer? However, her final Pokemon is up next, a Bomb of Snow, and there's no way we can one-hit KO this thing with Fly. But this is where the biggest part of my plan comes into play. We have U-Turn, which is super effective against a Bomb of Snow, so I figure I can outspeed and hit it hard enough so that I can switch into Richie and take it down with a 4 times super effective Flamethrower. Since he can survive anything she has to throw at us, but she gets a crit on Avalanche to immediately annihilate Richie. No way. That was such a good plan, too. I was proud of that one, but it wasn't meant to be as we have our very first death. After Aftermath's damage to her, her Citrus Berry activates too, bringing her to half, but thankfully Ricky can come back out and take her down with the final fly. An incredibly unfortunate death, but it could have been worse, I suppose. Seven badges. Welcome back to the team, Deville. Goodbye, Richie. Hey, give me that. Further ahead, in the Veilstone Galactic HQ, we can find a crucial TM, Sludge Bomb, which none of our Pokémon can learn by level up for some reason, so they're gonna have to fight over it. At the end of the HQ stands the Galactic Boss, Cyrus, and for this battle, I was a bit concerned, but eventually ended up teaching our newly evolved Groupie the Rock Slide TM and getting a Hard Stone for her to boost its power. We missed our first one against Murkrow and got hit by Nightshade, but took it out in one hit from there. We then missed against Golbat too, and Air Cutter brought us below half before Rock Slide I just barely doesn't KO on less than a sliver. What in the world? Thankfully, it just hits us with Poison Fang before he super potions so we can take it out from there. In comes Sneasel next, and it hit us with Slash to 33 HP before Rock Slide took it out immediately. A little messier than anticipated, but we got through. After this battle, I decided to teach Matt Ice Beam for some additional coverage given what we have up ahead. But first, some interdimensional godlike creature roars loudly and turns the sky into RGB lighting. Big deal. We're next challenged by Jupiter and Mars, and we have to work with Barry of all people. Great. This battle is always crazily long, but basically Groupie was a great way to counter the Psychic and Steel-type Bronzors with Payback. Then I could take out Skuntank with Dig, which I recently taught to her. This way we could lure out Golbat and not have both Skuntank and Perugly on the field at the same time, which can get very dangerous. And a few Rock Slides and a final Payback took down Golbat and Bronzor with us at a third health left. In comes the Perugly, and I was gonna hit it hard with Payback, but got put to sleep by Hypnosis. So I switched into Ricky to KO Barry's Munchlax so that he would bring out Heracross. Cross, after which I outsped and tried to dodge any possible attack with Fly so that Barry was free to go for close combat and take it out. After which Golbat was handled by a couple attacks from there with us below half. Pretty solid. The final team galactic battle is upon us, Cyrus. I spent a long time planning for this battle and this is part of the reason I led with Drapion in the last one because you have to use the same lead here. Groupie is a great counter for his Honchkrow but Rockslide doesn't quite KO but we got the flinch but then we missed. Oh, Oh man, a crazy start, but then we can outspeed and KO from there since he's super potioned. In comes Gyarados next with Intimidate, so I'm forced to switch here. I go into Ricky, who gets slammed by Aqua Tail, and he got a crit, but we survived on just 3 HP. Oh man, that ruins my entire plan though. I have to switch, so I go for U-Turn to at least get some damage off and pivot into Matt. He then hits us with Giga Impact of all things, down to just 40 HP. He has to recharge here though, so I hit him with Ice Beam to below half. I have to switch again, so I go into Groupie who gets hit by Ice Fang before we can outspeed and KO him with Rock Slide. That was such an unfortunate series of turns. In comes Crobat now, and Rock Slide does over half, but then he hits us with Confuse Ray. Ugh. We hurt ourselves in confusion, and I'm realizing we have nothing we can switch in, so I stay in. He hits us with Air Slash, and we survive on 39 HP, but then we snap out of confusion and don't flinch to KO him with another attack. But now, his final Pokemon is Weavile. Because of that earlier crit, I have nothing I can switch in. I just have to hope that he goes for a stupid move, and he did as he hits a nice slash, no crit, and I slam it with Rock Slide, but he barely survives in the red before his berry. Oh no, that slight miscalculation is everything. 
I just have to hope that he doesn't go for Ice Punch as I switch into Bread, but he did go for X Scissor, which still brings us below half. I have no choice but to sack Brett here, but he went for Brick Break of all things. So we survived the resisted attack and get a Giga Drain off for the win. What in the world was that battle? Absolute insanity the entire way through, but I can't complain about that last attack. That AI was crazy. A long journey brings us to Sunny Shore City, the location of the 8th and final gym. The 8th gym leader is Volkner, an electric type gym leader, and I have a bit of a plan for him. He leaves with a Raichu, and I send out Groupie first. Amazingly, we outspeed the damn thing, but somehow Dig doesn't KO, so we get hit by a charge beam before we can hit him again after he hyper potions, but I didn't want to make contact due to his static ability, so he got up a light screen before we could KO with Rock Slide. In comes Ambipom next, which has the strangest moveset in the world, World, but thankfully I just used Agility, not Nasty Plot, as Crunch brought him to below half before another Agility, but we just barely don't KO with another, after which he Baton passes the boost. Interesting. An Agility and Nasty Plot would have been dangerous, but Crunch now does only a third on Luxray after his Berry, and it uses Thunder Wave to paralyze us, but I had planned ahead with a Cherry Berry to cure us, after which a Dig Out Speed finishes him off. From there, Volkner used a full restore on Ambipom before two crunches get a high enough roll to take him out after he nasty plotted so he couldn't pass it to Octillery. And Octillery itself tanked a crunch well before hitting us with Charge Beam and getting the special attack raise. I have to switch here, so hoping he'd go for a water type move, I switch into Brett, but he just went for another Charge Beam anyway, so without the agility boost, he can outspeed us with an ice move, so Giga Drain finishes him off. All eight badges acquired. Hi Jasmine, I love you. Bye Jasmine. A long and perilous journey through Victory Road brings us to our final destination, which hopefully doesn't resemble the movie kind of final destination, the Pokemon League, before which I did a whole bunch of preparation with EVs, moves, and items and whatnot. I also finally performed a trade of Haunter to get a Gengar, a Pokemon we've never used in our challenges before, so I really wanted to try it out. I'm sure nobody minds having a Pokemon as cool as Gengar, am I right? Right before the Elite Four, Barry challenges us to battle one more time, but given that the level cap has increased vastly over his Pokemon, it's not too challenging of a battle if you're adequately prepared. Two key parts were Tentacruel outspeeding Staraptor with Ice Beam, Crobat tanking it out with Snorlax, and Groupie having Earthquake we got from the Wayward Cave to handle Rapid Ash just in case he used Sunny Day on Tentacruel, and also Empoleon which would have otherwise walled us pretty hard I would think. With that, it's time for the Elite Four. The first Elite Four member is Eren, the Bug-type trainer, and, well, we have a perfect counter for him, don't we? He leads with a Dustox, and I send out Ricky, who after missing due to a double team, KOs Dustox on the next turn with Fly. In comes Drapion next, the only thing Ricky can't really handle because it has Ice Fang, but that's okay as we have our own Drapion to slam him into the ground with a couple Earthquakes. From there, he sends out Heracross, and hoping he doesn't use Stone Edge, I switch Ricky back in, and he just used Night Slash, so from there, Ricky is able to one-hit KO his remaining three Pokemon with super effective Fly. What an MVP he's been so far. Next up is Bertha, the Ground-type Elite Four member, and again, our coverage pulls through as we can send in Brett against Quagsire, and with the outspeed, we're able to one-hit KO Quagsire, Whiskash, and Pseudowoodle with super effective Stab, Rose Incense boosted Giga Drain. Amazingly enough, her Hippowdon actually survived one in the red, but just went for Curse for some reason, so another did the job, and then could also take out Golem, since Sturdy only works on actual one-hit KO moves like Sheer Cold in this generation. The third Elite Four member is Flint, the Fire-type trainer, apparently and he leaves with a Rapid Ash as I send out Matt, who's able to instantly one hit KO it with Mystic Water Boosted Surf. Low Pony came out next and just used Charms, so two Surfs were able to take it out as well. Infernape could then only get a Mock Punch off as we would have outsped it otherwise, and Surf one hit KOs both it and his Steelix he sent out next. His final Pokemon is a Drift Blim, and luckily Matt also has coverage against it in the form of Ice Beam, which did over half before we got hit by Ominous Wind, but luckily it didn't get the Omni Boost, so one more Ice Beam did the trick. I was worried he might get a Sunny Day off at some point, so I was considering using Groupie, but I think the speed was crucial there, as getting hit by Earthquake from Infernape wouldn't have been pretty. The fourth and final Elite Four member is Lucian, the Psychic-type trainer, and although I'm really wishing we had Richie right about now, I think Groupie should be able to do some good damage here. He leads with a Mr. Mime, and we outspeed and slam him with a Black Glasses boosted crunch for the KO. In comes the main thing I'm worried about here, his Bronzong. With Levitate, there was simply nothing that we had that was super effective against this thing, so I decided to just try and duke it out with Groupie's Crunch, which still does a decent amount of damage, but not quite half. I said to myself that as soon as he started using Earthquake, I'd switch into Ricky, as we brought him to the red before his Citrus Berry after he used Gyro Ball. 
He then used Calm Mind, and I was like, ah, oh, that's fine, we're immune to Psychic. And we brought him to just a sliver after another crunch before he hits us with another Gyro Ball. I knew we could survive anything from here, so I hit him with two crunches again after another Forest Door. Then he went for Earthquake and got the critical hit. Are you kidding me? What is with our crit luck? Groupie goes down. Here I send in Bobby, who, with the spell tag attached, obliterates Bronzong with Shadow Ball, then amazingly outspeeds Alakazam with Shadow Ball as well, otherwise it probably could have swept our entire team with Psychic from there, if I'm honest. In comes Giraffe Egg next, which is part normal, but thankfully I had taught Bobby Dark Pulse, but it just barely doesn't KO. He hits us with Crunch, but we survive with a third and can hit him with a higher roll after he heals for the KO. His final Pokemon is Metacham, who thankfully Bobby can one-hit KO as well. Losing Groupie hurt, but we've got one one last chance to avenge her. It's time for the final battle, the champion, Cynthia. I don't think any words are required to express how tough of a champion she is, so after some planning, it's time to do battle. She leads with a Spiritomb, which is an interesting threat for us, so I lead with the Veal so we can set up Light Screen with the Light Clay item attached to extend its duration to 8 turns. This allows me to then get a Toxic off on it, after which I can safely switch in Brett now that we have the Light Screen up. This is my only opportunity to power up, so I go for Growth twice as we're brought to 2 thirds, but then I can smash it with Giga Drain for some recovery. Now, Brett is pretty well matched against her team, but one exception is Lucario, which she of course sends out next. However, we do have Stun Spore, so I use it to paralyze him before we get hit by a Dragon Pulse. With Lucario paralyzed now, and with Giga Drain hypercharged and giving us recovery, I decide to stick it out. And the plan eventually works as the balance tips in our favor even after she full restored. In comes her own Roserade next, and I mean, come on, we have to assert dominance here. Shadow Ball does three quarters on her, and she hits us with extra sensory, and we survive on only a third before another takes her down. In comes Milotic now, and this is a huge opportunity to get health back, but damn, I was not expecting a one-hit KO on such a defensive beast, but Roserade does have a base 125 special attack stat after all. In comes the big threat, however, Garchomp. I know pretty much any move would obliterate us, so I have to switch. I decide to go into Mad just hoping she'd use anything but Earthquake, and she used Dragon Rush, which we survive on 57 HP from here, and according to my calcs, we should outspeed quite easily, but we don't somehow, and she slams us to death with Earthquake. What in the world? If my calcs are wrong, that would also mean that not even Gengar can outspeed, and... Uh-oh. This is bad. The only thing we have that can survive even one move is Ricky. This ends up being one of the craziest things ever, as Fly doesn't do a whole lot of damage and we kept missing too. Essentially my strat was to use Fly, gain some health back from the Black Sludge in the air, then use Roost whenever we needed to when she used Giga Impact and needed to recharge. We came close several times, but eventually Ricky was able to pull it off with about 14 Flies and 3 Roosts. We almost ran out of Fly Power Points too, which would have ended us, but we pulled through. Her final Pokemon is Gastrodon, so I switch into Brett who's able to tank a muddy water before obliterating it with a 4 times super effective stab rose incense boosted giga drain for the championship. Wow. Honestly, that was a ton of fun. I didn't think we'd end up having such a competitively viable team in the end. That would be a really interesting run to try and do Deathless. At first I was thinking it might be possible just before the 7th gym, but a couple crits surely did us in, and a couple miscalculations against Cynthia almost had us lose this, but we did it. We completed a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Diamond with only Poison types. I hope you had fun with the run, and if you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really does help a lot and grows our community. A huge thanks to my YouTube members and patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support and get your names up here, the links are also down below. If you enjoyed, drop a like down below to help the video out and leave a comment letting me know what kind of run we should do next, and I'll see you guys for our next challenge video.